Now, protesters blocked one of London's busiest junctions today by plonking a large pink table there at the start of two weeks of planned demonstrations by Extinction Rebellion. The group are demanding the government stop investing in all fossil fuels. Our chief correspondent is in central London tonight. Alex. Yeah, it's hardly one of London's busiest junctions, but nevertheless a significant action. Extinction Rebellion said they take occupation places for two weeks. Well, you join me uh, with prescient time. In the last minute, the police have been moving in with final warnings that they will arrest people. That process, you can probably detect, happening, me, happening right behind me right now. There's a fair few number of people who will be arrested. Just out of shot down there, a number of people chained to each other uh, are lying in the roadway. And of course, the point of this in the run-up to the vital COP climate summit is to raise awareness, should that need do, of the climate emergency, but also, and that's what we're going to see in the second of two weeks, to point the finger at the City of London, where billions continue to be invested, of course, in fossil fuels, in coal, oil and gas. And what strikes you here today is the same complaint that is made well beyond environmental protesters, particularly here in the scientific community, that we have a government long on rhetoric and noise and words and targets, short on actions. The government talks about a green revolution on the one hand and says it's leading the world into that COP conference, but on the other hand, still hasn't put a stop to a deep coal mine potentially being sunk in the west of Cumbria, still talks about a £27 billion road investment programme, and still has done nothing to stop potentially a large new oil and gas field opening up the Cambo field just to the west of Shetland. Lots to play for and lots for people to say on the streets and you're going to see it in the next two weeks. But this is how day one has played out. A Monday morning in August. Not the easiest time of the week or year for mass political action, even for something affecting us all, the climate crisis. Among those here, someone who was a Metropolitan Police detective until two years ago, he found himself in Oxford Street looking at a large pink boat, the first major XR protest. I went into Oxford Circus one day, I heard a samba band, followed the samba band, I was going to get some trousers, and there was this pink boat, and I started talking to people, heard some speeches, and it just made me think that there are enough people that care. Another here cared enough to put his legal career on the line, his green protesting, the International Energy Agency, which provides advice to governments, which is supported by the taxpayer, has said fossil fuel investment must stop now. No more. We've got more than five times that, that, that we can possibly burn for consistency with the Paris temperature limits. The white middle class who can afford to care, a pain in the proverbial disrupting the traffic, electric cars included. Gesture politics. All the usual criticisms will be made, but in the run-up to the critical COP climate summer, a turnout of at least 10,000 is impressive. An impromptu march from Trafalgar Square was facilitated by the police, but in fact it was something of a decoy for this. Hello. <laughs> At the moment, the police completely outflanked by the main demonstration, which turned out to be something of a decoy. The real action going on here, a short distance from Trafalgar Square, where protesters have converged on all sides to block off this junction. By the time the police caught up, some were already locked on to vehicles and a large pink symbolic table. Well, the government have um, are very good at promising um, things about uh, the environment. Um, but actually, they've got the gold medal for promises and they've got the wooden spoon for action. Today I'm prepared to be invested um, and that feels really good. It feels amazing to stand up for what you believe in. They're not doing anything to avert climate catastrophe and that's why I'm here. And for those of you secretly wondering, yes, they do wear nappies. The government calls its green policies a revolution and believes it's leading the way as the host of the COP summit. The police tactic for now is to allow protesters to leave but not enter. Anyone wanting shops and restaurants can get through, 
but it's the police who decide who's who. Leaving some businesses complaining, though none would speak on camera. Equally, a sandwich shop had a long queue of XR protesters, surely busier than normal. The passing public looked on, somewhere between bemused and broadly supportive. It's an Extinction Rebellion demonstration. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah, I don't think much of it, to be honest. Are you um, for or against? I mean, I'm, I'm for it, really. Climate change is so serious now, we've got to do something about it. We really have. Yeah, right. Right. We can't go on like we are. I'm, I'm, I'm doing as much as I can, little I can do, with, with the right kind of car and, you know, trying to less travel by air and things like that. So begins a fortnight of street action at various sites across London and beyond. Next week, the focus is the City of London with its vast continuing finance of fossil fuel. But right now, they're bedding down for their first overnight occupation. Alex Thompson in Trafalgar Square.